Genshin Impact got quite the update announcement this week, with the live stream covering upcoming content for version 1.6 and a new PC platform for the game. First, let's talk about upcoming content. Mihoyo held their live stream last week, which shared news of details about a new character joining the roster by the name of Kazuha, who hails from the region of Ainazuma. While Ainazuma won't be releasing just yet, this will give a slight peek into the new area as the new anime sword wielder is tied to the region. There was also the announcement of the new Midsummer Island adventure featuring Klee, which includes a new boat called a Wave Rinder and a series of challenges that can summon phantoms that deal both animo and cryo damage, but a slight twist with only being able to be taken down by close ranged combat. There are also new rewards as both Jean and Barbara can gain costumes for the first time in the game by completing the Echoing Tales event. There's also a new Archon quest featuring the new character, setting up the closed off Inazuma. Another announcement for the game was made this week, which is that Genshin Impact will be available on the Epic Games Store starting June 9th, arriving alongside the new update. Existing players on PC, Android and iOS can continue their journey on the Epic Games Store platform. The latest trailer for Tales of Arise features the mystic arts for playable characters. There is also a new announced support character called Zephyr. Bandai also revealed some of the game's benefits on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series versus their PlayStation 4 and Xbox One counterparts. Mystic Arts abilities are highlighted in the trailer, which at the moment seem to be only in Japanese. It showcased Mystic Arts abilities, unique abilities for Alphen, Shion, Rinwell, and Law. Benefits outlined for PS5 include shorter loading times, priority modes, which are performance mode, which prioritizes frame rate at 60 FPS, and graphics mode, which prioritizes resolution in 4K. There's also dual sense wireless controller with haptic feedback and game help support. Tales of Arise will release on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC via Steam on September 10th, 2021. This week, publisher 505 Games released their fiscal year results for Q3 in a presentation where the company outlined a few details for Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. This sparked interest as the presentation included a line about a second version in development. The phrasing of this was a little ambiguous at the time, but now 505 along with Artplay have confirmed that Bloodstained Ritual of the Night will be getting a sequel and is currently in development through their latest tweet. While the sequel is underway, the creator behind Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, Koji Ikarashi, tweeted that the studio's focus is still very much on the current iteration, but this is great news to find out a sequel is now coming. When Bloodstained Ritual of the Night was first released, it was met with some negative feedback for the crowdfunded game due to the number of bugs and issues with the Switch version. Artplay have now been working on a number of updates since, including releasing new contents such as new playable characters such as Zengatsu and Bloodless, as well as adding classic mode and more. The game also launched on new platforms, iOS and Android, but there is still extra content still promised for the game, which the developer confirms is underway. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is available now to play on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, PC via Steam, iOS via the App Store, and Android via Google Play. The action RPG Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance will be launching this month with online co-op, but developer Took Games have now announced that after listening to fans, they will be adding split-screen co-op so players can team up offline as well as online. Their latest tweet on the subject also mentions that this will arrive hopefully with the free DLC that is launching this summer. What the DLC will contain is currently unknown, but it's great to know more content will be releasing after launch. Dark Alliance was announced to be released on June 22nd of this year, taking an over-the-shoulder approach to combat rather than top-down. Gameplay offers all the button mashing you could want, but also offers an experience that lets players master both the strengths and weaknesses of each attack, ability, and combo. You can apply guard breaks, team breaks, and pull off executions. Dark Alliance will release on June 22nd, 2021 on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and PC. According to CD Projekt Red's quarterly earnings call for Q1 2021, the developers shared a slight update for the current status of Cyberpunk 2077, getting reinstated on the PlayStation Store. For a quick recap, Cyberpunk 2077 was taken down from the PlayStation Store following feedback from those who had purchased the game and experienced problems since the launch. Ultimately, Sony decided to delist the game after a number of refund requests from fans. 
The developer has been working on fixes for the game and has shared through their earnings call that Cyberpunk 2077 is currently in the middle of the relisting process. When asked about what the conditions are for the game to return to the store, they shared they couldn't go into the details of exactly what the list of requirements were from Sony. CD Projekt Red will make an official announcement when the game is ready to be once again listed on the PlayStation Store. A DLC which was expected to release in 2021 is not the main focus at the moment, as the studio plans to concentrate on the most important fixes and updates first. Marking the 20th anniversary of Fantasy Star Online and the 10th anniversary of Fantasy Star Online 2, June 9th is now the launch date for Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis. This big expansion offers players a revamped graphics engine and an updated game system, launching on Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and PC in North America as a free-to-play MMORPG. In case you missed it, New Genesis will run alongside Fantasy Star Online 2 as a twin universe, but it's set a thousand years after Oracle's battle, meaning a whole new adventure for players to experience. It also sets to bring an open field when it comes to exploring, meaning more environments to discover and a highly detailed character customization engine. If you're wondering how PSO2 NG will run on your PC, you can check out the benchmark tool, which also previews the character creator. Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis will release on Xbox One, Xbox Series X, S, and PC on June 9th. Square Enix has announced they will be holding their live stream for E3 2021 on Sunday 13th June at 3.15pm EDT. The lineup will contain more news about a new project in the works under Edis Montreal, as well as more information on the Life is Strange True Colors entry plus the Life is Strange remaster. This also means a closer look at Platinum's Babylon's Fall, the close combat hack and slash action title which has had few details since its announcement back in E3 2018. Recently, a rumour of Babylon's 4 closed beta test popped up online, possibly indicating news of the game might be coming to E3, and Square Enix has confirmed that some news will be premiering at E3, but we don't know exactly what that will be yet. According to the announcement, it didn't include Final Fantasy XVI, which could mean it's still early on, with not much to show, or they may still be showing something in terms of an update. This week also was the release of the latest patch 1.4 for Biomutant, which adds a few things including now the option to adjust the narrator to be completely off. Previously you could lessen the frequency of the narrator, but now there's an option to toggle for gibberish, the language the furry creatures of Biomutant speak, and for the narrator, allowing players to select if they want the narrator to speak or not, or opt in for both gibberish and the narrator. The patch also comes with the new extreme difficulty setting, meaning enemy damage and attack rate is increased, upping the challenge. The loot has now an increased chance to have a level closer to the player's actual level. This patch focuses on changes for PC, but the console patch is coming soon according to the official Biomutant Twitter account. As for what's coming in future, according to THQ Nordic, one of the most requested features so far is for the option to change the outfit of your character with already collected pieces without affecting stats. While THQ hasn't confirmed on whether they will implement this in future, they have heard their request loud and clear. If you want to break down for all the features with the current update, be sure to check out our Biomutant Patch 1.4 breakdown video. Gato Salvage Studio has shared the upcoming Celtic mythological RPG The Waylanders has been delayed from its early 2021 release window now to fall 2021. The party-based game features real-time combat with tactical pause option for players to have control over offensive formations. This allows for a deeper combat experience as formations allows for players to round up other party members to perform specific class-based moves against enemies. The Waylander's latest update for Early Access offers full controller support, difficulty options, improvements to combat and UI, as well as a number of new NPC combat bugs and lighting improvements. The studio has released a new roadmap that outlines the upcoming updates for summer all the way to August, which includes new pets for the Ranger class, improved camera system, romance system, new weapons, and more. Well, that's it for the week in the wikis. Please join us again next week for yet another great week of gaming. Remember to check out our VIP program for some exclusive supporter benefits. And budding writers should take advantage of our Become an Author initiative. Thanks again for being part of this great community. Keep checking in with us with news, reviews, YouTube streams and vids, and general wiki goodness.